we're lean, we're mean, and we're gonna be reviewing the Elgato Cam Link, and then in the next video, the green screen. I should quit life. I should just stop. I, I should stop right now. Who? Orisa? Where? Don't go around the corner. Huh? You better don't. I just see a rock. Oh. Cool. Dude, will you just get a mod mic already? It attaches to any headphone so you can use that good pair that you like, but I'll actually be able to understand your call out. It also has a mute switch so that I don't hear all those darn conversations with your grandma. We gotta get serious if we're gonna get out of plat. Yeah. Just order one tonight. Head on over to antlineaudio.com to learn more and check it out. Adam Repos Vox here, back with another awesome tech video. Today reviewing the Elgato Cam Link, which is their answer to essentially a, a very niche market, but one that is super important for broadcasting and streaming and things like that, especially in the like local sports broadcasting front. But it is their UVC capable capture card, which means that it's recognized without pretty much a driver by any program that would read a webcam, whereas their traditional capture cards aren't always picked up, such as via Skype, the Windows 10 camera app, if you want the easiest method of, you know, capturing footage, or just lag-free, latency-free, and uncompressed access for vMix, OBS Studio, and so on. All of the tests now you're seeing will be recorded through OBS Studio. I have uploaded a couple Windows 10 camera app tests already to my channel over last weekish, so you can check those out by the link in the video description. And we're going to be checking it out. I did test it with some gameplay as well, which we will touch on. But first and foremost, this is using my Panasonic G7. I have two softbox China ball lights out here, and then a main LED panel on myself. It's set to, I believe, the widest aperture, so f2.2 or t2.2. It's a wide angle lens. The cool thing about the Elgato Cam Link is that it's a really small capture card. That's, you know, the size that it is. And it allows you to use your dedicated camera instead of using a webcam. And for comparison, I have set up essentially the best possible light for the C920 here. This is the base C920 that pretty much everyone has and uses. Now, of course, this video is at 60 FPS because that's what the capture card supports and my other cameras support, but the webcam is only at 30 FPS here. And I've touched on many number of times on the channel my issues with these webcams, the auto adjustment issues, the frame rate issues, the stuttering, the delay that can sometimes happen, and so on. And you can watch any number of my webcam coverage in the past, but this is kind of the best possible setting for it with as bright of a light as this. So to me, it's a, it's a fair comparison. You get to see what it looks like. And some of you have said in previous comparisons that you actually prefer the webcam. I can't possibly imagine why. Uh, but in terms of setup, a webcam is, of course, easier. But this helps to bridge that gap a little bit. But it's not perfect, and there are some major issues that they're going to have to address here that I'm concerned about. Now, as far as main competition for the Elgato uh, Cam Link goes, you have the old one that I reviewed way back in the day, the Magewell XI 100D USB HDMI. Quite the product name, but this is what most people have been using to use to get their face cam in via a camcorder or external camera, and sometimes even for gameplay. Like it's it's an uncompressed direct access capture card, just like this one. And this is about $300, and there is technically a knockoff being sold for a little over $100, uh, but I don't have it, and I don't like addressing direct knockoffs because they kind of cause problems for the company. But Avermedia actually also just released their Extreme Cap UVC, I believe it's called, or the BU110. They have weird product names. I literally just got this in, so I haven't really had any time to test it, uh, but I will be mentioning a comparison to the Cam Link in my review of this, so stay tuned for that. Be sure to subscribe. Uh, but the Cam Link is fairly small. It has a plastic build, but it's affordable. It's about $150 versus, or $140, I believe, versus the uh, $300 for the Magewell or $250, I think, for the Avermedia. Connects by USB 3.0. It has the USB port sticking out the front, kind of like a flash drive, but then they include a small little USB extension in case it doesn't fit or you don't want to put that strain on your USB ports. And it supports up to 1080p 60fps signals. The problem is... It's, it struggles with support for other signals. Uh, 
And this is a huge problem and why a lot of people in one of my big uh, broadcasting Facebook groups, where it's people who do like sports broadcasting, church broadcasts, uh, and let me switch back to the C920 here for a second, uh, you know, high school sports, local broadcasts, those kinds of things, they've actually either returned their cam link or have serious complaints about it because it doesn't support interlaced. And that may sound dumb. As far as gaming and video production goes and stuff, interlaced is generally not an acceptable format. The issue is, A, it says it right on the box that 1080i is supported, uh, which is, you know, whatever. It says it on the box, I believe it said in their announcement and their website, but a lot of very high quality 1080p cameras that people use for broadcasting and streaming and production only output 1080i. And it doesn't support it at all. I tried. My cameras don't seem to output 1080i at all. My camcorder here, uh, the Canon Vixia R500, seems to have claimed, it seems to have a 1080i recording mode, but when I hook up the HDMI, it's just outputting 1080p60 anyway, so I don't entirely know what's up with that. Um, so the only way that I had to test this was to hook up my PS4 and just tell it to only do 1080i, and it already said unsupported, but I thought I'd force it anyway, since my monitor that the splitter runs to is 1080i compatible, and I just got some sort of weird glitch on the screen, and then OBS crashed outright, and then I had a lot of trouble with it since. So, doesn't support 1080i at all, and they need to remove that from the box or fix it and support it. And But this identifies the main separating factor between the cam link and something like the Magewell. I don't know if this is a, the case with the Avermedia yet, but the Magewell has a built-in scaler and a built-in deinterlacer that does most of the processing work for your computer for you. It automatic, you know, it has a built-in encoder chip which deinterlaces the interlaced video file for you if you set that to, you know, you want to pull a progressive signal and it automatically does any upscaling or downscaling that you're pulling from the card. So you have a list of pretty much every possible supported resolution and frame rate and interlace mode that you could pull from this device regardless of what you put into it. Whereas with the Elgato Cam Link, you only ever get to choose what is supported or, you know, what your camera is outputting. And that actually turned out to be in the case of my Canon T3i to be 480p60. Uh, even if I set it to 720p60, and that's a problem with the T3i, and I'll have a video clip I'll switch to in just a second explaining that. But the T3i only outputs 480p60, and there's no way to upscale that on the actual card. You have to have your CPU doing that extra legwork, and again, doesn't seem to work with 1080i signals at all. Now this is, this did output 480p60, and even though 480p60 isn't listed as compatible, it worked. But, of course, this outputs the overlays and things like that, and you have to use Magic Lantern to turn them off, and then you still get a skewed picture. It's not great. But this does work best with is mirrorlesses or DSLRs that just have raw HDMI output for recording. Camcorders. Camcorders are baller. Just make sure you can output 1080p30 or 1080p60, and that is something you can manually assign. Other than, uh, otherwise, you're going to run into that issue. And I'll show some footage with this camcorder as well. Um, and you can use it to capture. It is technically their cheapest capture card that Elgato offers for capturing gameplay. And it looks very nice. It is basically, in that regard, quality and stuff-wise, it is basically an HD60S with no pass-through. Again, this goes from HDMI directly to USB. So there's no pass-through. So if you want to hook up a game console, you need to use an HDMI splitter. And there's plenty of good ones on Amazon for like 20 bucks. But you get uncompressed access via USB 3.0 to the capture card, and so I was pulling full lossless recordings off of it. It looks fine in Windows 10 camera app, even though it's at a lower bit rate. You know, it looks fine for gameplay recording as well, and it's super low latency. Like, I'm using it right now, and every, my audio is matching up to the video. I don't have to add delays or anything. It is very low latency. It's only going to be a few frames, and it's pretty nice. You just have those limitations. Now, one advantage that the Cam Link has, or at least an advantage that the Cam Link has over something like the general UVC capable cards that are designed to be generic is that you can still use the cam link with their game capture software it still recognizes it as a capture card so you can use this for your vlogs for your face cam recordings or you can use it to capture gameplay either way you have their software behind you for live streaming broadcasting or what have you and you get to catalog your recordings which has always been my favorite feature about their software as much as I complain about it the ability to sit there and label gameplay recordings and things and keep it organized in that library is super handy. And being able to do that with vlog footage or anything you use the cam link for is pretty nice. 
Now, since it is uncompressed, low latency and things like that, if you do any sort of crazy scaling or skewing of the image, your processor will have to do the work and that may impact low uh, performance machines. And so that is a problem that my buddy Lon Seidman brought up in his review. He, he covered a review from a slightly different perspective, but I feel like it missed this point in my opinion, is that he covered it from the you know budget user perspective and low end PCs, if you're doing any super crazy compression with the image, you might struggle with a little bit of CPU load. But the alternative is not to provide a compressed signal. See, basically Elgato has two different ways of handling things. Whereas the Magewell card, it kind of does some of the compressing for you on the card itself. Well, with the Elgato cards, you either have like the original Elgato HD60, which provided a direct H.264 compressed image, which then your processor had to decode and then re-encode within OBS, which added way more CPU power, or something like the HD60S, the HD60 Pro, or the CamLink, where it's an uncompressed signal, uses up a lot of bandwidth. You won't be able to put this and another capture card on the same bus unless you have a really powerful desktop bus on a laptop. You're going to struggle. But that means your CPU doesn't have to do double duty with decoding and encoding, just the encoding work. So I wanted to add that note and point out his review. He does some testing with low-end machines. Another thing about the driverless mode is this supposedly supports a Linux. So we're going to flip over and test that in a minute because the Avermedia Live Gamer HD2 said it supported Linux and it did not really. Well, they, they didn't say that. They said it was driverless. And I said, hey, would that support Linux? And they said, maybe. And then it turned out not to be true. I didn't say that. Um, but we're going to flip over and test, and I'm going to show you an issue with recording from something like the T3i specifically. Higher-end DSLRs or like a mirrorless like my Panasonic G7 are going to be fine, but Canon's stupid, so you got to want to pay attention to this. So this real quick is just a really stupid example of what happens when you don't have the ability to turn off overlays or customize your camera's video output. This is my Canon EOS Rebel T3i running out via HDMI to the cam link. Now, it the the settings aren't exactly set right, but it outputs a 720p or seven no a 720 by 480p 60 fps signal, despite the fact that we're set to 1080p 30 mode, and all of the overlays, including the grid over my face and everything else, doesn't look great. Some cameras you can turn or most cameras, especially most modern cameras, you can turn off the overlays, and you can use Magic Lantern, a custom firmware, to turn off some overlays for the T3i but you don't exactly get a great result either way. Now this is with a few tweaks. I've disabled the overlays in Magic Lantern and I've adjusted the shutter speed in ISO and set it to 720p 60fps in the camera, but it still is only outputting 480p 60fps to the cam link for some reason. I can't make it do anything different than that. My focus is a little off, but you get the idea. Things are a little bit smoother. We have 60fps theoretically, but it's not perfect. It's skewed a little bit. I'll have to restretch the output a little bit even, but you can get a result from the camera. So I guess it's worth noting that. Elgato's CamLink is their first capture card device that seems to support Linux in OBS. When I've tried other programs, they don't really give me the option to switch to the CamLink. Not necessarily Elgato's fault, probably fault of Linux programs that are designed for laptops with a single camera, but it does work within OBS and seems to work just fine the same way it does on Windows. So kudos for that. Let's see that support more often. You may proceed. And finally here we have my Canon Vixia HF R500 camcorder. They now have the like R800 out I think, but they've never really updated the cameras, they just keep re-releasing them. Uh, but this is a 1080p 60 capture card outputting to the cam link with overlays disabled. You get smooth 60 FPS footage still, but it's on auto settings, which means I don't have to put in as, mar as much work or it'll adapt to low light, just be a little bit more noisy. Um, but the color does get a little weird shift here. If you compare it to the uh, C920, you see it's a little bit more, it, it kind of adds more green, whereas the camcorder adds more magenta. Uh, but it has an automatic face locking autofocus versus the manual focus of my Panasonic G7 I was just using. And it still looks pretty good. One of the more easier setups. Now, I did want to mention too, someone asked and I forgot to mention earlier, is that it does pick up the audio from your camera. So you can use that as an audio source. Now in OBS Studio, it's annoying. The default audio device that OBS Studio pulls from the cam link doesn't provide any audio. You have to manually set a custom audio device and then set the digital audio interface of the cam link and it'll work fine. 
in my tests of the Windows 10 camera app, it loads the audio from the cam link just fine. So you can get your on-camera audio, audio if you need it. Uh, I don't recommend it because it's going to be much worse than using like a dedicated microphone, but it is an option available to you. Or if you run a separate shotgun mic or something into your camera, you have that option. So hope you enjoyed this review. For 140 it's a bit of a tougher sell. sell. I, I would recommend... If you can get it for $99, if you can get the Cam Link for $99 or $100, I, I think it'd be the perfect value for this kind of capture card. If you're just looking for their cheapest capture card option for capturing gameplay, as long as you don't mind buying an HDMI splitter, this will work as well. Just wanted to provide some tests here too. This will work, again, with a wide variety of cameras, including modern GoPros and GoPro clones that output via HDMI. It should work with them. Oh, here you see, you do have to turn off all of your menus and things like that and turn off uh, automatic sleep mode and things like that. Got to be careful there. That shows an example. But yes, it will work with GoPros and GoPro clones. And I actually just ordered a GoPro clone for $56 on a lightning deal. And then I had an Amazon gift card too. So a very good value. And I want to see what it looks like running to the Elgato cam link. It won't get here for a couple more weeks, so I can't do it in this video, but I'll release a follow-up video with that camera because I think it might be a special value point. Uh, but still pretty good product. Just has some limitations that will hurt it for the overall broadcasting field that... The, like the main limitations of not having the built-in scalers like the Magewell is just kind of they're stuck with it But hopefully they'll be able to work out or fix the interlacing issue with 1080i support for 1080i Especially since they printed it on the damn box. I'm Eagles Vox here to make tech easier and more fun Hope you enjoyed the video smash the like button if you enjoyed get subscribed for more awesome tech content And I will see you next time Eagles Vox is a patreon supported production our videos would simply not be possible without the support and generosity of our patrons, whom you can see on screen right now. If you'd like to join the inner circle and get early access to videos, among other things, go to patreon.com slash to learn more.